ranking amongst North America's most iconic wetland predators is the great blue heron. These birds are typically thought of as leading solitary lifestyles. However, during the breeding season, they often form large nesting colonies referred to as rookeries. New York rookeries tend to be in the tops of dead trees in beaver wetlands. Most of the footage in this movie came from the rookery at the Great Swamp Conservancy in Canastota. Toward the end of March, as the winter was melting away, the nesting season had begun. The first stage of courtship would have been a dance that happened in the waters nearby. They are now engaged in the next stage of courtship, in the nest site in which the male had chosen. They are now getting to know one another better by beaking and preening. The pair to the right is a little bit farther along in the process. The female is pretending to place sticks into the nest. The male gets the hint and accepts her as a mate and goes to fetch her a stick. In this case, from another heron nest. Continue to bring her sticks, and as the nest nears completion, it will be time for the deed. Time, there will be scuffles over territory. It should also be noted that great blue herons aren't the only animals utilizing this habitat. Over the course of the coming weeks, they will continue to do touch-ups on their nest while they are incubating the eggs. Both sexes do incubate the eggs, but they don't always seem to agree on whose turn it is when. Within a month, about two to three chicks begin poking their heads above the rim of the nest. 
At this point, the parents are feeding the chicks by self-induced vomit. Meanwhile, the other residents of the rookery are also progressing through the nesting season. As the chicks grow older, the feedings grow more aggressive. As they grow larger, they also spend more time building their strength and coordination. Eventually, they are the same size as their parents, and the parent spends more time watching them from a perch than in the nest. By July 29th, the heron rookery was completely empty. Over the next couple of weeks, I did see some groups of herons flying by in various locations. I am assuming that these were parents teaching their offspring some final survival skills. However, in the end, the great blue herons dispersed in order to go lead the rest of their mostly solitary lives.